All right, now I'm gonna taste these beans and tell you what I think about them. I can already tell you my mouth's watered because I know they're gonna be good. They're perfect. They were not in that Instapot all of that long. I was able to just get everything in there, set it, walk off and leave it, and supper was done. Can't get any better than that. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Uh, we really don't have a lot going on in the garden, so in order to have content for our channel, I'm showing you some of the things that we, me and my wife, truly enjoy. All right, there's our Instapot that we bought well over a year ago, and we just absolutely love it. Uh, the lid simply goes on there, and you slide it over to where it's closed, and you make sure that the little vent on the top says sit ceiling. Now, I can fix our dinner for us in that, or I can even do a lunch in it and we'll just leave it on the counter and it will keep it warm for hours after it's cooked. A lot of people grew up uh, very poor and I fortunately, and you heard it right, fortunately grew up in a family that was very poor as far as income was concerned. When it come to love, we had an abundance of it. Uh, I'm one of five siblings and of course mom and dad have already passed and hopefully someday we'll be with them i have my sister who was just below me she died of complications from her diabetes and it was heart related and that's the same thing that dad passed from was his diabetes and it got to the point that it just damaged his heart so much that uh, there was no possible way for him to make it. But they were both good Christian people, as well as mom. She's very Christian. And the three of them, we can't help but feel they'll be on the other side waiting for us someday. So, but because we were poor, one of the things that we did eat a lot of was beans. And a lot of people frown on that. Uh, they think, oh, you're having pintos, or you're having white beans, or you're having navy beans. But I love them. There's nothing better than a great big bowl of home-cooked and beans that have been seasoned with a pan of cornbread. And when I was growing up, we raised lots of potatoes. So, yes, the old saying, beans and cornbread and potatoes, that's that was one of the staples in our family and we enjoyed that and there's nothing wrong with it so today i'm going to show you how we fix our beans now uh, we cheat a little we we cook them a little quicker than leaving them on the stove all day that takes a lot of electricity to run a stove all day but we're going to cook these in our instapot and i'm going to use up some packages of beans that have been open for a while uh, and I normally store these in an airtight container. One thing that's really great for storing your beans in is a quart or a half gallon canning jar with a very good tight fitting lid so that they don't get any weevils in them. If you've got your beans put back in jars and they're airtight, they'll last for several years. Most people don't realize that. Everybody has their own process for going through their beans. I don't like cooking some that look like they could have been beyond their prime. I guess that's one way of saying it. And I put those over here in a little plate because I'm not going to throw them in the trash, believe it or not. Those are going to go in my compost. All right, so I've got this bunch checked. This bunch of beans, as we refer to it, is look through. And there's one I missed. It looks like a little mouse or something had been nibbling on the back side of it. Put them in this colander. And then I'm going to wash them a couple of times to make sure that all of that dust. Now, when beans are gathered up and processed to be packaged up, trust me, they're going to try to keep them clean 
but they're not going to take as good a care of them as you or I one would. So it's important to, to wash all the dust and dirt off of these before we put them in our pot. Okay, this plate full of beans is great northern whites. And as I said, everybody does this differently and there's nothing wrong with that. You are in control. It's your meal you're preparing. You do it the way you want to do it. Don't follow anybody else's example. Uh, I just don't like keeping the really dirty beans in there. And of course, these were the cheaper beans. And during COVID, it was all I could find. I was lucky to find these. I bought these beans back in about April of 2020. And let me tell you something. Our store pantry shelves were bare. And I did buy up a lot of beans over the summer just so in case that there was another shutdown I would be prepared but in 2020 we were just thrilled to death to have anything that we could get uh, and I'm sure most of y'all experienced those empty grocery shelves in the late spring of 2020 but today I'm going to add a little something different to these we like to have our pot of beans cooked the first day and then there's always leftovers and those beans with some of our home canned tomatoes and some beef and some chilies uh, we fix we fix chili out of them so why not go ahead and add a few dried red kidney beans to the mix but now that's quite a bit that'll that's a good two meals worth so we'll get our mixed beans tonight with ham bits in it and tomorrow we'll use these leftover beans to make a pot of chili all right i always wash my beans in cold water i'm simply taking the beans in the colander and scrubbing them together, rubbing them together so that any dirt that's on them is going to come off. Quite often, we've gotten these and there's where they were picked by machines where we've actually found little rocks instead of beans in the bag. But that's what we look for and take care of earlier. All right. Some of them are trying to escape, but we're not going to allow that. Simply rinse those off. And I know I'm doing washing that for quite a while, but as I said, I know that the white beans were fairly dirty and I like to scrub them really good and clean. And I'll have to say they're looking very good. There are my beans in my Instapot. As you notice, it looks like, well, there's not a lot of beans in there, but now trust me, as I said, these beans are going to swell considerably. Plus, we're going to want a little bit of broth on these beans uh, to absorb into our cornbread. That, that's just the way we eat it, beans and cornbread. And we might have some potatoes to go with it this, this afternoon. These are some little homegrown potatoes that I grew in my little urban garden. Just in case you're wondering what I'm going to put in these beans, I'm going to put these ham bites. And these are not very fatty pieces. There seems to be some fat on it, but I think a lot of that's just because it's frozen the way it is. And yes, I vacuum seal packages of ham just for beans. A lot of people think that buying a whole ham is just too expensive. Well, now stop and think about that a minute. I buy a whole ham. When I bake that ham, that ham was probably just guessing it would have probably have been about 20 something pounds. We're not gonna eat that much ham. But when I bake it, I let it cool. And then I take it and I slice it into slices. And, and I'll have to be honest, it's more like slabs. And I freeze those for sandwiches. I cut some of it up for beans. 
we can actually make a numerous amount of meals from a ham. And it's, if you look at it that way, well, we might have maybe two or three dollars per meal and it's hard to, in today's time, have good quality meat at that price. And it's just a great big hunk of ham cubes. That's going to be perfect for seasoning our beans. So, yes, it's frozen, but you can put frozen food inside the Instapot and it's not going to be an issue at all. Okay, I've got my meat down in there. I'm going to put some salt. There will be some salt from the ham itself. It seasonings in it, so now it's time and I like to turn it around. You probably can't see it. Well, I guess you can see a little bit. There's a maximum fill line there. So, I'm going to want quite a bit of water in here because these beans are going to need to absorb it. We've got our water up to our fill line. I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of black pepper. I will say that if my mother-in-law was fixing this at this point she would put quite a bit of garlic in hers I am to my fill line there I've got all my seasonings in I've set my lid on it I'm twisting my lid over to the side that says close as it starts to cook my little valve here is going to pop up and this is how you vent it after it's done, and trust me, you don't just put it to that. It's far better off if you can let it sit here and unplug it and let it vent naturally because it will blow beans through the top if you jerk that over there too fast. I found that out the hard way. But I'm going to move it to where it says sealing. And I'm now ready to plug it in and turn it on. An Instapot is not hard to use. And at this point, I'm going to just plug into the outlet here and you'll see I'm going to put it on manual and you do not need an hour and a half on beans what can I say I fix things to suit me not everybody else a lot of people like the beans to be real crisp like I want mine to be perfect okay it's now starting to heat up once it builds up pressure, my little gauge back here, it's going to pop up. It's going to give me a little alarm to let me know that it's starting to cook, and then it'll start a countdown on this. After it's cooked, I can leave it sitting in this pot for several hours, and it will just keep it warm. So, I look forward to having some beans tonight. Our Instapot is done, so I have unplugged it. It is set here now long enough for the little valve to fall down. And when I move it to venting, there's no venting. So now, where it says close, I'm going to move it towards the other side, which says open. Lift the lid and hold the camera back so it doesn't get a lot of foam on it. And there's our beans. Okay, and I stick a ladle in here. And if you can see, there's pieces of ham. And the beans are just cooked very soft and tender. Now, it will not cool in this thing very fast. So I'm going to lift this off and set it on the table. Okay, here's our beans and ham. It looks like there's quite a bit of ham in it, really. When you start stirring it up, I have some beets, some sweet pickled beets. We grew those in our garden and canned them this year. And if you have never made homemade zucchini relish, you're really missing something. That stuff is wonderful on beans. And of course, we like a little chopped onion in our beans. All right, I'll fix my bowl and taste it and let you know how they turned out. All right, let's dip out some of these beans and ham and get a little bit of that bean broth, as I call it, and put it over our cornbread. Okay. 
Before I eat mine, I want to go ahead and put a little relish on the side of the bowl. And I'm going to want to lay a pickled beet on the side. Everybody has their preference on how they like their beans, but fresh onion on it. Now, I don't put as much onion as a lot of people would. Up until about four years ago, I didn't even eat raw onion. I loved it cooked, but now my taste has changed. It's time for me to sit down and have some supper. All right, now I'm going to taste these beans and tell you what I think about them. I can already tell you my mouth's watered because I know they're going to be good. They're perfect. They were not in that Instapot all of that long. I was able to just get everything in there, set it, walk off and leave it, and supper was done. Can't get any better than that.